Hey everyone. In my last video, I discussed some of the hardware and accessories you might want to consider purchasing alongside your Shapeoko 3 or Hobby Level CNC mill. In this video, we'll cover another point of confusion for many new users, what software they need to use. I've definitely seen new users ask about how to perform basic CNC operations only to be directed towards expensive software packages. Without further context, a new user can be left with the impression they have to spend hundreds if not thousands of more dollars to make their CNC mill do what they want. Fortunately, the truth is, you can do almost everything you want with free software. So in this video, we'll discuss some of the roles the various pieces of software need to fulfill and how those roles fit together to form a cohesive workflow to help you get your idea from in your head to in your hands. After that, we'll discuss some of the more popular software options available to you, both free and commercial, and why you might choose one over the other. The process of getting your ideas to your mill can be broken into three stages. In the design stage, you begin to model your project using computer-aided design tools. This involves creating the 2D or 3D shapes you will later cut. The result of this stage is typically a vector design or a 3D model. During toolpathing, you'll define your machining operations, choosing when, where, and how your CNC will cut out the piece. The result of this phase is a set of G-code instructions that will tell your CNC exactly how to move. Finally, the instructions generated during toolpath setup are used by your motion control software and the onboard controller to move the machine, hopefully in the way you desire. The various pieces of software we'll be discussing can fulfill one or more of these roles, and as a general rule, you can choose to use different tools to accomplish each of these stages. The graphic design software, like Inkscape and Illustrator, don't care about the final purpose of your design, their focus is simply on allowing you to draw the shapes. Likewise, the motion control software, such as Carbide Motion, don't really care what program generated the G-code, or even if you coded the G-code by hand, their job is simply to execute the instructions. Because of this, you can continue to use Carbide Motion even if you decide not to use Carbide Create. Carbide Motion is even happy to send 3D carving instructions even though Carbide Create doesn't support this feature at all. While some limits exist, such as Carbide Create's inability to export SVGs for use in other programs, most of the more common software packages will work with each other, at least to some degree. Keeping these three steps in mind, let's talk about how some of the software you're likely to come across fits into this workflow. Carbide Create is a free software package from Carbide3D, designers of the Shape Oco 3. It's capable of doing both the design and toolpathing stages. Carbide Motion, also from Carbide3D, is a G-code sender. Its purpose is to take already generated G-code such as that output from Carbide Create, and send it to your CNC, allowing it to execute the instructions. Carbide Create and Carbide Motion work together to create a complete workflow, and especially at the beginning, you don't need anything else. That said, you are not limited to the software provided by Carbide 3D just because you're using a Shapeoko. Dedicated vector graphics programs like Adobe Illustrator and Inkscape have much more robust drawing tools available compared to Carbide Create. Creating your designs or converting them from JPEGs and other sources is much easier in this software. These programs are not designed specifically for CNC work. They work for any graphics drawing. This focus allows them to excel where other programs might fall short. Pretty much any graphics design software will be able to export as an SVG file. This standard file format can be used by Carbide Create, Electric Products, and most others. This means even if you prefer to use Carbide Create for toolpathing, you can still use an external tool like Illustrator or Inkscape for your design, benefiting from their superior drawing tools for Carbide Create's toolpath creation. Vetric produces several products which are highly regarded in the CNC community. Of these, VCarve Desktop and VCarve Pro are probably the two most popular. The Vetric products we'll be discussing fulfill both design and toolpathing stages. Generally speaking, many of their design tools and toolpathing tools are superior to Carbide Create, as the program has been around longer and is more robust. These advanced features do come with a price tag ranging from several hundred to almost $2,000.
Another interesting and free offering is Fusion 360 from AutoCAD. This full 3D CAD package allows for advanced modeling techniques and advanced tool pathing. This is the only program in my list that allows for full three-dimensional drawing and tool pathing. Finally, while they're well beyond the scope of this video, there are alternatives to Carbide Motion as well. CNC.js, BCNC, and Universal G-Code Sender are just some of the options you have if you're looking for features not offered in Carbide Motion. I would consider switching your motion controller to be an advanced topic, and that most users should really consider staying with Carbide Motion unless they have a strong reason not to. It may seem like this leaves you with a lot of options to have to research and choose from, but we can narrow it down quite easily. Unless you have previous CAD experience or a strong desire to do mechanical parts on your CNC, Fusion 360 has an unnecessarily steep learning curve for people wanting to do craft projects and other CNC work and who are just starting out. There are some other great resources on YouTube for using Fusion 360, so if you think that solution is right for you, I suggest you seek those out. We'll continue by discussing some of the pros and cons of the different software I've mentioned. Although Vectric makes a variety of products, to do a fair comparison I'll be considering their vCarve software. This software comes in both a desktop and professional version, the primary difference between them being the maximum size of a project you can do. The desktop version is limited to 24 by 24 inches, which is more than enough for the standard size Shapeoko 3, but not enough to fully utilize the XL or XXL models. While there are some other differences between the two, that should be the main reason for buying one or the other, at least initially. As mentioned previously, Carbide Create is provided by Carbide 3D, the company that designs and makes the Shapeoko 3. It is the simplest of the software that I plan to compare, but that simplicity is not necessarily a downside. There are a lot of basic concepts one should master when starting with their CNC. In my opinion, using a program like Carbide Create allows a beginner to explore the world of CNC without overloading them with options, which to me makes this the most beginner friendly. There's also a loose integration between Carbide Create and Carbide Motion, allowing you to send your generated G code right from Carbide Create to Carbide Motion without an intervening save step. In addition to these reasons, Carbide Create is both free and widely used by the Shapeoko 3 community. Because of this, there's a large number of users who can help you get over whatever problems you're having. Carbide Create is far from a perfect program. Its drawing tools can be quite limited and sometimes frustrating. While it's usually possible to draw whatever you need to right from within the program's interface, it is not always as smooth or hassle-free as it could be. When you find yourself ready to do more advanced projects that require inlays, two-sided milling, peck drilling, and so on, Carbide Create doesn't offer these features. That's not to say you can't perform these operations in Carbide Create, but the process is manual. Again, whether you consider that to be a benefit forcing you to learn your CNC inside and out, or a drawback by slowing you down and forcing you to learn a manual operation, is up to you. Finally, there's limited file support from Carbide Create. Carbide Create is only able to import SVG files in addition to their own native format. This usually isn't a big problem, but if you download designs from the internet and they don't come in SVG format or already configured for Carbide Create, you may need additional third-party software to convert the two. Considering the limitations of Carbide Create, one can easily see why vCarve Desktop and Pro have become so popular. Their drawing tools are a significant step up from Carbide Create. It's hard to describe exactly why, because every tool just feels a little more intuitive and a little easier to use. vCarve will also give you the option from day one of doing those more advanced operations such as inlay creation, peck drilling, two-sided milling, and so on. You can begin using these advanced features before you really understand what the machine is doing or why. If you're trying to start making projects as quickly as possible, or want to remain more focused on what you can create and not how it's created, this is actually a huge benefit and can save you a lot of learning time. Unlike Carbide Create, vCarve can open files in a lot more native formats. When I use it, I'm able to import my Adobe Illustrator designs without first having to save them to a third-party format. If you find yourself frequently moving designs between software, this can be really helpful as well. 
The real significant downside to using vCarve is the cost. vCarve Desktop currently costs $350, and the professional version is double that at $700. For many people who bought their Shapeoko 3 because it was an affordable CNC option, adding a third to half of the price of their machine over again, just in software, can be a bit daunting. Finally, that will bring me to my recommended workflow. As good as vCar's drawing tools are, I actually find the drawing tools of Adobe Illustrator and Inkscape to be superior. These programs are extremely robust, and the time spent learning them is incredibly valuable. While I may be biased as I've used them for years, I find it much easier to design what I want in these programs than anything else. In addition to letting me draw my designs from scratch, I can also easily work with images from the internet, converting them into the vector format needed. The value I find in these tools is not limited to CNC. I highly recommend them because they open up a world of digital creating. The designs made in these programs can be used not just for CNC work, but laser cutting, vinyl and paper crafting, and for straight graphic design. Using one of these programs to do your design eliminates one of the major reasons not to use Carbide Create. The only real consideration between the two is cost. Inkscape is free and will never cost you a penny. Illustrator is a premium program, currently being sold as a cloud-based subscription service, either costing you $20 a month for the single program, or around $50 a month for their entire suite of professional-grade software. I don't necessarily recommend buying Illustrator just to use for these purposes, but if you already have it for another reason, learn it. If you don't have a reason to have Illustrator and don't want to pay the extra cost, use Inkscape. And so my recommended workflow for beginners is to use Inkscape to do your design, substituting Illustrator if you already have it, importing that design as an SVG into Carbide Create, using Carbide Create to set up your toolpaths, exporting your G-code, and importing that into Carbide Motion. This combination can be completely free if you're using Inkscape. It still provides you with the ability to cut almost any design you want. You aren't limited by the design tools of Carbide Create. You still benefit from Carbide Create's beginner-friendly approach, which allows you to more fully learn how your machine's cutting operations occur, while avoiding the more costly software. After you've used this combination for several projects, I think you'll find the workflow very intuitive. Even after I decided to invest in vCarve Desktop, I continue to use vector graphics drawing programs to do my design. I allow vCarve to do the toolpathing operations that it does best, but I still very much prefer to do my design steps in Illustrator. It's even made it particularly easy for me to do projects that incorporate both CNC, laser, and paperwork. Thank you for watching. As always, these opinions are only my own, and you can easily find people who disagree with me. It's common to find people who will immediately suggest to buy vCarve software but I've always attempted to take a minimalist approach, investing money only as I reach the barriers of what I have. If you have a similar mindset, you may find this approach beneficial. If you have questions about any of the information I presented here, or a differing opinion that you think I should hear, please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more from me, please consider leaving a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel.